Good afternoon. It's good to see you all today. Please join me in our call to worship. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, O my soul. Do not put your trust in princes, in mortals, in whom there is no help. Happy are those who help is the God of Jacob, whose hope is in the Lord their God, who made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in them. Please join me in our opening prayer. Giver of all good gifts, you have created us for life together, and in Christ you have revealed the true riches of faith. Strengthen us this day to pursue all righteousness, godliness, and love with perseverance and gentleness, that we may take hold of the life that is really life and dwell with you eternally. Amen. Please join us in our opening hymn, In Christ Alone. That's a beautiful song. We'll just practice it a few more times. All right. Please join me in our call uh, of confession. I'm not standing here because the microphone, these two microphones are causing feedback. 
Please join me in our prayer of confession. We have sinned, O oh God, hoarding what we have, grasping for more, and ignoring those who hunger and thirst. Forgive us, purify us, remake us, that we might love as you love. Amen. Let's pause for a moment of silent prayer. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. He will not always accuse, nor will he keep his anger forever. He does not deal with us according to our sins, nor repay us according to our iniquities. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so great is his steadfast love toward those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far he removes our transgressions from us. Friends, believe the good news of the gospel. Let us share with each other the sign of Christ's peace. this morning is from the book of Luke chapter 16 verses 19 to 31 there was a rich man who was dressed in purple and fine linen and who feasted sumptuously every day and at his gate lay a poor man named Lazarus covered with sores who longed to satisfy his hunger with what fell from the rich man's table even the dogs would come and lick his sores the poor man died and was carried away by the angels to be with Abraham. The rich man also died and was buried. In Hades, where he was being tormented, he lifted up his eyes and saw Abraham far away with Lazarus by his side. He called out, Father Abraham, have mercy on me and send Lazarus to dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue for I am in agony in these flames. But Abraham said, Child, remember that during your lifetime you received your good things, and Lazarus in like manner evil things. But now he is comforted here, and you are in agony. Besides all this, between you and us is a great chasm has been fixed so that those who might want to pass from here to you cannot do so, and no one can cross from there to us. He said, Then I beg you, Father, to send him to my father's house, for I have five brothers, that he may warn them so they will not also come into this place of torment. Abraham replied, They have Moses and the prophets. They should listen to them. He said, No, Father Abraham, but if someone from the dead goes to them, they will repent. He said to him, If they do not listen to Moses and the prophets, neither will they be convinced, even if someone rises from the dead. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to the Lord. We begin with a powerful opening scene where we see, hmm, let's try that. We begin with a powerful opening scene where we see a rich man dressed in the royal colors of purple and wearing the expensive materials of fine linen 
eating a sumptuous feast. Jesus, of course, I always say, is the master storyteller. And he begins to paint a picture with his words as he introduces this first character. And we immediately know what he owns, what he wears, and what he eats. Make no mistake, this parable makes a justice statement about issues of wealth and poverty and inequality. And yet, Jesus is ultimately making a statement about spirituality. What is the spiritual state of this person? Is his heart swimming in love and goodness and generosity as he is in fine clothes and food? Probably not, because we know the outcome of the story. Does his heart break for the man at the gate? It didn't seem like it while he was alive. It feels good to be part of the in-group, right? We've all been part of the in-group at various points in our lives. But at every point of our lives, we should take the pulse of our beating heart to check the spiritual vital signs. And one measurement of spiritual health is whether or not our hearts are beating in time with the people at the gate, with the people on the margins, with the poor, the discriminated, the needy. Hebrews 13 reminds us Jesus also suffered outside the city gate in order to sanctify the people by his own blood. Jesus was crucified in Golgotha, which would have been located outside of the city in keeping with the Roman and Jewish customs at the time. The rich man chose his crucifixion, but he died for the wrong cause. He held on to the cross of his own selfishness. Instead of being crucified with the people at the gate. Matthew 25 tells the story, the parable which we've all heard. Then the king will say to those at his right, Come, you who are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry and you gave me food, I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink, I was a stranger and you welcomed me, I was naked and you gave me clothing. I was sick and you took care of me. I was in prison and you visited me. And then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry and gave you food or thirsty and gave you something to drink? And when was it that we saw you a stranger and welcomed you and naked and gave you clothing? And when was it when we saw you sick or in prison and visited you? And the king will answer them, truly I tell you, just as you did it to the one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did it to me. So yes, this is a message today about wealth, poverty, and inequality. But it is more deeply a message of one's heart and our relationship with the hearts of others and our relationship with the heart of God. One of my favorite images in Christian symbology comes from the Catholic tradition, the sacred heart of Jesus. This image is usually depicted as Jesus' flaming heart shining with divine light. It reflects the long-suffering love and compassion of the heart of Christ toward humanity. This man was in a battle for his life, and he decided to die on the hill of selfishness. My friends, our life is a battle. The Stoic Seneca writes, sometimes even to live is an act of courage. Every day we are struggling to live a good life. Every day we are struggling to live a life worthy of our Lord. Every day we are awakened to multiple hills in our sights. Every day our spiritual journey is confronted with decisions of which paths should I take? On which hill and for what cause am I willing to die? And we die, are we to die on the hill at the expense of our sisters and brothers at the gate? 
Who will protect them? And how will we live knowing that our spiritual lives were dressed in royal purple and fine linen while feasting sumptuously when so many are dying at the gate, dying of loneliness and fear and rejection? Paul writes in 1 Corinthians 15, and why are we putting ourselves in danger every hour? I die every day. This is a certain brothers and sisters as my boasting of you, a boast that I will make in Christ Jesus our Lord. If I fought with wild animals at Ephesus with a merely human perspective, what would I have gained by it? If the dead are not raised, let us eat and drink for tomorrow we die. Do not be deceived. Bad company ruins good morals. And he ends, sober up as you rightly ought to and sin no more. For some people have no knowledge of God, and I say this to your shame. And so, my friends, we are told to sober up. The saints, the apostles, the martyrs, Jesus himself is boasting for all of us. Question, how is your spiritual pulse today? What do we need to do, to strengthen, to be in deeper communion with the hearts of others in need? How might I merge my more, uh, more intentionally my heart with the heart of Christ? And at his gate, a poor man named Lazarus, covered with sores, who longed to satisfy his hunger with what fell from the rich man's tables, even the dogs would come and lick his sores. Just like there is something about the heart of the rich man that brings condemnation, there is something about Lazarus' heart that brings salvation. Wealth alone doesn't bring condemnation, and poverty alone does not bring salvation. Just like wealth is not a proof of righteousness, nor poverty proof of sinful behavior or divine disapproval. But what I want to examine, but I want to examine the hearts of these two men and what it can say to us and about us. What is it about the heart of the one that leads to death and the heart of the other that leads to life? The rich man wasn't condemned because of his material possessions any more than the poor man was saved because of his material poverty. Perhaps it was poverty in spirit that led to Lazarus' salvation. Jesus says in Matthew 5, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are the poor in heart, for they will see God. On a macro level, this parable, this parable delivers a stinging rebuke regarding wealth and poverty and inequality. And Jesus unequivocally always sides with the poor and the marginalized. And there is a spiritual component in this regard, and that's a sermon for another day. But on a micro level, God sees our hearts. God engages in a forensic accounting of our hearts. Today's parable invites us to do the same. How might I nurture a poverty in spirit? How might I make my heart more pure? How might my heart more closely resemble the sacred heart of Jesus? And how festered was this person's heart that he didn't care for the man with festered wounds at his very gate. My friends, the gates of salvation and condemnation are this close to our hearts. And just like every night when we go to sleep, we die just a little bit. Every morning we are confronted with the choice. Through which gate will I walk through today? What path will lead me closer to Christ? I've previously mentioned that poverty in spirit in the classic Christian spiritual tradition reflects an utter dependence on God. It reflects a sense of emptying oneself and detaching oneself 
from the things of this world and surrendering to God. In today's story, one person emptied himself, detached himself from the things of this world and surrendered to God. This demonstrates great humility and great strength, and for this, he was rewarded. And perhaps the dogs that licked his wounds were the angels preparing to escort him to heaven. And the other person surrendered himself to himself. The genius of this story is that it expresses both a social judgment and a spiritual judgment. For my social justice friends and for my spiritual devotional friends, there is a message both existential and eternal about how one should live their lives in this life and the ramifications of our actions for the next life. Now, if I may make a shameless plug for my talk this Thursday for Active Aging Week at 10 a.m. on spirituality and film, I wish to quote a character, Maximus Decimus Meridius, from the movie Gladiator, who says, what we do in life echoes in eternity. In the spirit of partisanship between the social justice and spiritual devotion, we are all invited to nurture a poverty in spirit, an invitation to detach from the things of this world and attach ourselves to the things of God. And we now hear the anguished cries of the rich man to Father Abraham, have mercy on me and send Lazarus to dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue for I am in agony in these flames. What painful and powerful imagery used by the gospel writer here. The excruciating thirst of the one person who had so much asked from the other person who had so little for a single taste of moisture from his finger to touch his parched tongue. My friends, this is us. Our tongues are parched with regret from some of our actions in the past. Our tongues are parched from the hardness and pain and cruelness of life. Our tongues are parched with emptiness and loneliness. Father Abraham, have mercy on us. Send Lazarus to dip the tip of his finger in water to cool our tongues. My friends, I'm here to tell you that Jesus is the living water who will quench our spiritual thirst. In John 7, Jesus cries out, let anyone who is thirsty come to me and let the one who believes in me drink. As the scripture has said, out of the believer's heart shall flow rivers of living water. All we have to do is lean on him, learn from him, live like him, take Christ into our hearts the way we take in bread and juice into our mouths. Notice the poor man is named Lazarus and the rich man has no name. For we are all the rich man. Jesus is the new Lazarus. Philippians 2 states, God exalted him even more highly and gave him the name that is above every other name. Let us remove the purple and linen clothes of this world and wrap ourselves up with the poverty of Christ. Let us lay down our possessions and distractions and regrets and pains and let us joyfully lift up the cross of Christ. Let the wounds of Christ become our wounds. Let us die with Christ today and rise with Christ tomorrow. My friends, the angels will come to clean our wounds. And until the day we dance and sing with Abraham and Moses and the prophets, let us clean the wounds of each other. Let us look for the people at the gate. Let us look for people across the hallway. 
Let us look for people longing to fill their hunger with the table scraps of others. And let us clean their wounds. Let us become descendants of Lazarus. Let that be our prayer today. Father Abraham, fill me with the river of life so that I may be an oasis to others who thirst. Fill me with the balm of Gilead so I may clean the wounds of others in the sacred name of Christ. Amen. Hello again. A few announcements. So, as I shamelessly said, this is Active Aging Week, and I'm giving a talk this Thursday at 10 a.m. Uh, on movies and spirituality. It's been a lot of fun putting that talk together. It's very different than what I've ever done. Um, if you're going to be here, I'm going to say come early, come close, because it has a lot of video, a lot of movie scenes. I'm going to be showing a lot of movie scenes, and I, I, I'm having fun putting it together. I hope you enjoy it and just have, you know, maybe get something out of it. Uh, so another announcement we have, of course, is that the Spiritual Care Committee is sponsoring the Dublin Food Pantry Collection. Um, that's for this week. Donate food items or checks can be made out to the Dublin Food Pantry. Um, if Lois Meredith was here, she would do a much more dignified presentation. Um, so please give, please give uh, food uh, or whatever you can. Um, are there any announcements, any other announcements for today? Any other announcements for today? Okay, prayers, prayers. Um, I left my, my, my prayer book, so I'm, I'm using this, sorry. <laughs> um, I want to lift up uh, Shirley Brown. Um, she's not feeling well, and so she asked for, for prayers uh, of healing. So let's keep Shirley um, in our hearts. What else? Yeah. People are the hurricane, yes. Yes, thank you. Yes. Peggy was in Okay, so Peggy is in Alderwood. Yeah, and then I was all day I just sat in chemo. And I'm sorry, would you repeat that again? My son Phil all day is starting chemo. And Phil is starting chemo. We'll keep him in prayer as well. May I hold this? Yeah. Okay, thank you. Yes. Regarding Peggy Christensen, uh, they are getting her breathing under control. She said everything is okay there, and she's going to try to get to the service over there after this service here. Oh, okay. So Peggy, her breathing is under control. Trying she's to get it under trying control. to get it under control. Okay, great, great, excellent. She might be here at the 4 o'clock service. Yes. Okay, it'd be nice to see her there. Thank you, thank you. Yes? I'd like prayers for myself. Um, tomorrow I have my... One year after cancer began, so I'm hoping that that's clear. Should be real good. Yes, Kathy, for you, yes. What else should we pray for? Yes. Linda Paul. For Linda. Thank you. What else should we pray for? 
Let's pray. Lord, as always, we thank you for the many blessings that you've given to us. We love you, Lord. We ask you to fill this place with your presence and with your love, with your spirit. Lord, I lift everyone here up to you. You know their hearts, you know their wounds, you know their needs and their joys. Bless them, Lord. Bless their family and friends. Lord, we pray for all the residents in Friendship Village, particularly those who um, are suffering from some type of physical difficulty. We ask you to give them a spirit of encouragement and healing. For the staff, bless them and their families as they journey together uh, at this place. Lord, very specifically, we pray for uh, Shirley. Uh, we ask you to uh, bless her and strengthen her. We lift up Linda as well, Lord. We ask you to continue to be with her at this time. Continue to bless her and give her a spirit of encouragement and strength. Lord, we lift up Phil to you. Bless him as he continues with uh, chemotherapy. Lord, we ask you to, to bless Peggy as she is in Alderwood now. We, are, we thank you for um, what seems to be some improvement. We ask you, Lord, to just be with her, to wrap your arms around her as she continues uh, this moment of physical rehabilitation. She's such an important part of our community here. Lord, we give you thanks for uh, Kathy and her health, and we ask you to be with her as she goes for uh, her one-year uh, appointment to, uh, uh, for her scan, a cancer scan, Lord. And we just ask you to give her peace in her heart, Lord, strength, encouragement. Lord, we lift up all the people impacted by this hurricane in the Caribbean, in Florida, up and down the East Coast, Lord. It's overwhelming. Lord, we ask you to give those families encouragement, strength, perseverance, Lord. Touch their hearts. Let them know that they are not alone. So, Lord, we lift up all these prayers to you and the prayers that we keep silent in our hearts. In Jesus' name, amen. Let us pray together the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass together. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Let us prepare our hearts for the Lord's Supper. It is good and right and a joyful thing to give you thanks and praise always and everywhere, O God Almighty. We bless you for your continual love and care for every creature. We praise you for forming us in your image 
and calling us to be your people. You sent us prophets and teachers to guide us on the journey. Above all, we give you thanks for the gift of Jesus, who is the way, the truth, and the life, who took on human form to live and die as one of us. We thank you for the Holy Spirit, who leads us into truth, defends us in times of hardship, and gathers us from every people to unite us in one holy church. O God Almighty, send your Holy Spirit upon us, that the bread which we break and the juice that we drink may be to us the communion of the body and blood of Christ. O Lord, we pray that your whole church may soon be gathered from the ends of the earth into your kingdom. On the night he was betrayed, the Lord Jesus took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, he took the cup, saying, Take, drink, this is the cup of the new covenant in my blood. Do this in remembrance of me. My friends, the bread we eat and the cup we drink is the communion of the body and blood of Christ. The gifts of God for the people of God come for all things already. My friends, take and eat. This is the body of Christ broken for us.
blood of Christ. The blood of Christ. Take and drink. This is the cup of the new covenant poured out for us. Gracious God, we give you thanks for the gift of our Savior's presence in the simplicity of this holy meal. You have fed us with the bread of life and renewed us for your service. Send us now into the world in peace. Grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please join us in our closing hymn, Deeper and Deeper. Thank you. 
May the Lord bless us and keep us. May the Lord's face shine upon us and be gracious to us. May the Lord protect us from all anxiety and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Have a great Sunday.